Hello, everyone. Ryan Rodriguez back on another episode of Cal Maritime's Career Services Connecting Keel Hauler Show. Today, we are joined by Logan Smith and Brian Agosta, both licensed mechanical engineer grads. Logan um, from the class of 2004, Brian from the class of 2003. They both came in at the same time, but Brian wanted us to know that uh, Logan was on the five-year path. So uh, <laughs> I'll make, sure, Thanks, make sure we get that in. But guys, thank you so much uh, for taking a little time out of your day to, to chat. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us. And thanks for that little tidbit of information there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. We got to keep it. We got to keep it fun a little bit. Uh, so Logan and Brian are both the founders and principal owners of Critical Arc, which is a commission engineering firm on the West Coast, which, which they started in June of 2014. Um, before that, they both were working at Turner Construction Company, where they were working in commissioning engineering, project engineering, so on and so forth. So before we kind of dive into um, critical arc and and what you guys learned from Cal Maritime um, and Logan, we'll kick it to you first. Just kind of take take us a little bit through your career path up to now. Yeah, well, um, I you know I went to school up in uh, a small town. And, uh, I think we had um, it was a I grew up in a city of four thousand residents uh, in a at an elevation of four thousand feet up in Pollock Pines, California. So kind of a small town and. I decided in high school that, um, you know, I've always been really good at like kind of taking stuff apart and fabricating and putting it back together and things like that. And it was like, well, this, I don't know, mechanical engineering, that sounds pretty neat. Right. Mm -hmm. So decided to go to Cal Maritime, luckily was accepted. And, um, uh, you know, it was hard, had a hard time. Uh, like Brian uh, alluded to at the very beginning there, it uh, didn't, do, <laughs> didn't do great in Calc 1. Uh, and uh, that put me behind, you know, a half step, uh, pretty much a full full year, uh, just right out of the gate. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, it was a great, great experience. Um, did the did the Electrothon project uh, as my senior design project with a couple of partners. And that's one of the ones that's still in the uh, on display there in the in the uh, engineering hall. So feel pretty proud about that. Um, and then I inter I interviewed uh, during you know my senior year did the interviews that the that the Maritime Academy put up put on and um, interviewed with a company called EYP Mission Critical Facilities for a job for a commissioning engineer I had no idea what it was um, landed the job and it's like okay let's do this it was out of San Francisco um, ended up working there for four years and really liked it got to travel around a little bit and doing a data center mission critical environment commissioning. Um, one thing led to another, I worked on a project with Turner Construction. They liked me. Uh, they hired me in 2000, end of 2007, beginning of 2008. Um, that was a Turner, Turner Construction's commissioning group. Um, and then they, they uh, liquidated in 2014, at which time I'd already, you know, obviously Brian and I knew each other from school, but we were working together at Turner FMS at the time. Um, and then we decided with our third partner, Justin Harder, to, uh, see if we could position ourselves to take kind of take over some of the contracts that FMS had. Um, we didn't end up doing that. Uh, they had a $5 million commissioning job at Salt Lake City that they had just been awarded. And we were like, oh, well, we'll just take off our blue hard hats and put on white hard hats and we'll just, we'll just take over the work. No big deal. Um, and, you know, it didn't happen, obviously. Um, but it was, I think that was the kind of silly thinking we needed just to be, you know, to have the motivation to kind of just go out on our own and do the thing. Um, First contract in 2016 with Tesla up at the Gigafactory, and then Brian and I kind of quit our jobs uh, within the same week. I think it was one day after each other um, for a three-month contract with with Tesla, and that turned into a two-year thing. And um, here we are doing. We've got some awesome. Uh, we've got some really awesome clients, and uh, you know, really, it was 2016 that we kind of started this this thing going, and now we've grown to like 14 employees and. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the story, kind of the story till now. So, Sweet. and yeah, and Brian, what about just kind of your, your path as well? My path to where I'm at now? Yeah. Man. So I went to Cal Maritime, little different story. Like, uh, my father had graduated from there. My uncle, my dad was an MET grad in 87. I think my uncle graduated in 81, 82. So the writing was kind of on the wall for me to also attend. Um, <clears throat> so I went, um, studied mechanical engineering, um, after school, <clears throat> let's see, what did I do? 
Uh, it's been a long we'll time. We're old. <laughs> I <Yeah. remember> that. <laughs> um, so after school, I started working shoreside for, um, actually, I did a two-month stint with Tidewater Marine down on the Gulf of Mexico. Quickly realized, like, that wasn't the company for me. Um, got out of that, uh, worked shoreside with Local 39, um, some high-rise office towers in Emeryville. I was living in Martinez at the time, which Martinez to Emeryville, you think it's close, but it was like a two hour commute each way. Wow. Um, which really started to wear on me like early on. And here I am like 21, 22 years old, sitting in my car for like four hours a day. And I'm like, there's gotta be something better than this, right? So it start, I'd be on the top of the roof. Early. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> I said, you're, you're, you're starting back pain too early sitting that long. I, I tell you. And I'd be up on the roofs there at the high-rise office towers and stuff, looking down on the port of Oakland, kind of seeing the ships coming in and out. And I had some buddies that were sailing. Got a call one day from a, a college buddy who said there was an opening uh, working for Tote up on one of their new diesel electric ships, kind of going from uh, Tacoma, Washington to Anchorage, Alaska. Fell in love with it. The schedule was great. 10 weeks on, 10 weeks off. Um, absolutely loved sailing. Did it for, oh, about seven years or so. Um, knew at some point I wanted to get out to, to start a family and all that stuff. And the time was kind of coming. Um, had always maintained a good relationship with Logan. He had kind of been working on me to come try out this whole commissioning thing. So uh, an opportunity came up at the uh, San Diego airport to go work on that project. And I'm, I'm from San Diego. It's where I where I call home. Um, so got off the ship, I think 2010, um, jumped into commissioning down there at the airport project. At first, I absolutely hated it. Like being a, a marine engineer, like you see a problem, you grab the tools, you fix the problem. Um, with commissioning, it's, it's a different approach, right? Like you're not the one picking up the tools and fixing stuff, but you gotta, you gotta really rally the troops, the project team to, to solve some of these issues so it kind of required a different skill set than what I was used to um, but it's something that I struggled with for shoot probably a good year um, once I got into commissioning but after I kind of found how I could provide value to the project and all that um, really fell in love with the work um, and then it kind of bleeds into Logan's story um, working with Turner Construction um, till 2014, they dissolved the company. And we really enjoyed doing commissioning. So we decided to kind of start our own thing. Um, sat on it for a couple of years while we tried to drum up some business and, and grow the thing organically. Um, and then we got the big call from Tesla to say, hey, what are you guys doing? You wanna come help us build some Model 3s? And we're like, why not? Let's try it out. Let's go for it. So. That was 2016, and that really hit, kind of catapulted the company into um, a lot of the clients that we have today. I mean, I can't really say how grateful we are to, to have started a company and the first contract to be with Tesla on such a marquee project. I think that, you know, and Logan can attest to this, I think it opened the door to so many other clients that have come since then, um, rather than toiling through uh, the ranks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of an immediate like all right this is real we're doing yeah. this this mm -hmm. is the type of work that we like to do so um nice. just been growing ever since so cool that's how cool we... yeah no definitely uh get, give you guys a little bona fides uh off the get-go for sure for sure yeah yeah and it like it wasn't even because we were really that good like uh -huh. let's be honest like they were building this gigantic gigafactory in the middle of nevada and they needed all the help they can get so mm -hmm. we were one of many companies that came and worked there um and so I don't want everybody to think that we're like, we just had this great yep. thing. Um, but, but to Brian's point, like the contacts we made there have, have mm -hmm. rolled into like all the tech companies, all the ones that you use every day. Yep. Um, and those people go to different companies and then they're like, Oh, I know this company called critical arc. We can come help you out. And it just, it just, it just mm -hmm. blew up, you know? Yeah. So we got very, very lucky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a, a lot of it, I would say is uh, whether it be like with your own company or your career, just kind of striking while the iron's hot when the totally. opportunity presents itself for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. You just, you can't, can't be afraid to take a risk, you know? And yep. I was like, 
going back to when I started school too, I was the first one in my family to go to college. And um, my mom was like, wow, mechanical engineering, huh? That's, you know, that's pretty hard. And I was like, well, uh, I'm going to give it a go and mm -hmm. see what happens. And uh, as, uh, you know, as evidenced by my five-year plan, I was a slightly better than mediocre student, but mm -hmm. I stuck with it. And um, with the help of my classmates and everything and, uh, you know, made it through and stuff. And it's been, it's been a great experience. Uh, you know, it's been great. We, we made great memories there and stuff and we still do. So nice. Yeah. Well, th um, then I did want to ask both of you guys and um, why specifically the license side of the mechanical engineering. And so like Brian, I know you were saying your, your family had done the MET side. Um, so kind of what mm -hmm. made, what drew you to that? And then same with you, Logan, like why that over the mm -hmm. unlicensed track? You want me to take that one first? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So I didn't really get to make up my mind when it came to that because um, <laughs> my dad did the, the MMR program when he was there. He's like, all right, if you're going to college, you're going to do this program too, and you're going to help pay for some of this college. So before I even knew the difference, I was already kind of set on the license track. But mm -hmm. as I got going into it, I thought it was the right spot for me just to keep my options open. Um, I mean, there's nothing like pulling into a port for the first time where you just see the city start to pop up on the horizon when you're on a ship. Um, so I wanted to keep that option open to me just in case I ever did decide to sail. And um, I think lucky, luckily enough, I, I gave it a shot. You know, I kind of scratched that itch a little bit and again, absolutely loved it. Um, you know, there's certainly some difficulties with going out to sea and the lifestyle that it brings, but there's also there's a lot of reward to it. Um, you know, for, for seven or eight years, I didn't have an email address. I didn't go to meetings. Um, oh, yeah. When I was off of work, I was off of work. Nobody was looking for me. Um, and I think those are things that you don't really appreciate when you're younger. But as you get older, like me and Logan, where, you know, we've always got our cell phone. People are always trying to get a hold of us now. We've got meetings all day. The inbox is constantly filling up you can look back at those times and like really appreciate it. So um, I guess my advice for anybody watching this is keep your options open, right? You never know what you want to do. Um, and it's a great fallback, uh, you know, so that's how I ended up doing it. But yeah. I, uh, Ryan, I made the decision to go licensed track. I, I never intended to sail. Mm -hmm. um, I, it was real. It was literally an insurance policy for me. Um, I decided, you know, I have one opportunity to get this right and I'm going to, and I'm going to do everything. I'm going to take every opportunity that I can. Um, and I, I, I never did use my license. In fact, I'm looking at it right there, hanging on the wall <laughs> and I uh, never did use it. But I, I just thought, you know, when I started school and four or, you know, five years later, um, I didn't know what the economy was going to be like. I, luckily mm -hmm. I had the wherewithal to just plan ahead. And I, I literally got it just so that if I, if I needed to, I could go to the hall and catch a ship for a few months or something. Um, and when I graduated, I had to make the decision, the difficult decision. And this is kind of stemming off of what Brian said to go to see, go sail and make a ton of money. And then knowing my stupid self go out and like start living on that, you know, that higher income and then be trapped mm -hmm. or like financially trapped in that, you know, house poor or whatever else else kind of poor basically or go work for half as much on the shore side and, and, and just go at a slower, slower growth pattern. And, um, I opted to do that and build the shore side experience because I knew ultimately I didn't want to, I just didn't want to sail. Um, not nothing wrong with it. I, I, I kind of did want to, I just, I had other stuff going on. Um, and so, yeah, I made the conscious decision not to, um, for way less money and, you know, it ended up working out. So mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Um, and then uh, Logan, we'll start with you on this one, because obviously with the engineering program, the, the hands-on nature of everything and with commercial crews and the senior design project and all that kind of stuff that you guys get, the training cruises, how did that, like when you guys went into the, your professional careers, how did you feel like that really helped prepare you um, and give you the yeah. skill sets to kind of jump in and be a professional? Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> so I've always been, I've always been pretty hands-on. I grew up with my pops rebuilding engines and working on transmissions and vehicles and cutting the springs on my buddy's Volkswagen Jetta to lower it, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Like I've learned to weld early on. Um, I've always been into that stuff. And so that's one thing that attracted me to the Maritime Academy was 
that it wasn't just an engineering, you know, uh, coursework. It was actually the hands-on stuff. But I tell you what, you know, the first, the one thing that I, the, the one benefit I didn't know I, there was going to be was that first initial systems class where you go and trace all the systems on the ship. And I have no idea what I'm looking at. I'm just looking at a bunch of pipe and that still carries over to what we do today on a daily, on a daily, day to day basis, looking at schematics, reading drawings. I mean, all those things that we learned that first semester is what we go back to. Um, and then having that experience to so like parallel generators, right? Paralleling generators on board the ship is no different than paralleling them in, in a data center. Um, when you're standing in front and you're watching the synchroscope, it's the same thing. Uh, it's just on a much bigger scale. So having that experience to do that, I would say that like the steam, the steam experience probably doesn't translate as well because it won't use a lot of steam in commercial buildings other than like hospitals and things, but all that electrical training and just having that ability to like to, to see those the inside of the pumps and the insides of those valves and understand what they look like inside was huge Man. sorry phone ringing to, to brian's point yeah but brian <laughs> you got anything to, to add on, on that yeah you know on top of on top of the you know the classes and everything that you're taking to understand the theory behind everything which is great right um coming out into the workforce with that hands-on knowledge like i don't know at least with myself like is a you know going out to tidewater initially on a ship with you know adults who have been doing this for a long time um you know at least you feel somewhat empowered when you go go out there um to actually be to be useful and stuff and i remember that that first ship i was on they uh it was a newer ship so they hadn't really built out their their um, workspaces and stuff yet, and I I jumped right in and grabbed grabbed a welder and started welding up tool racks and stuff like that, which you know obviously you know translates or comes straight from some of the some of the workshops we had at Cal Maritime. Um, so to me, it was more of a, a confidence level, like you kind of understand um, what you're doing, uh, how to do it. Um, but like Logan mentioned, like the systems class is awesome as far as kind of building your approach and how, you know, as an engineer, you always have so much information to digest and it's very easy to get overwhelmed with all of that information. I think what Cal Maritime did a really good job of is um, kind of honing in your approach to break it down into like bite-sized pieces. And it's like, all right, I got to learn this whole new training ship, the Golden Bear. But we're going to start with the jacket water system and we're going to go through that kind of step by step by step understand how each component works you know get that down and then we're going to jump over to the fuel oil system and we're going to go through it step by step by step so to me it really helped me kind of um refine my my problem solving skills and, and instead of just looking at the big picture and getting overwhelmed finding ways to break it down into a much simpler equation, right? It's like, it's like calculus, right? You've got this problem that looks, you know, daunting, but if you start to break it down into 10 other smaller problems, the answer kind of starts to present itself. Uh, so I think that's the biggest thing for me was just the approach, you know, don't get overwhelmed, take it step by step, trust the process. You know, and I carry that with me in everything that I do, whether it's commissioning or, there goes Logan on his motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, so now thinking more along the lines of commissioning engineering, you guys were both kind of saying how it was kind of new for you guys when when you started getting started in it. What um, maybe gave you the confidence to like say, yes, I will take this job, even though I don't really know fully what it entails or um, what maybe appealed to you without knowing fully what it was that it was like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this and and we'll make and I'll make what it is of it and, and go from there and uh, Brian we'll start with you on that one what made commissioning appealing to me that's a good question um initially it was just the the lure of getting back shoreside um it a it a you know interesting project in San Diego seemed to somewhat translate from uh the shipping world um but initially I didn't, I didn't know a whole lot about commissioning, like what it was and, and all that. And like I had mentioned before, like the first, 
six months to a year, I really struggled with it. And it wasn't until I kind of realized how I could provide value, how I could um, work with the people that were actually, um, you know, building the building or installing the systems, um, how I could work with them to really make their process even better, um, where I started to get some value and some sense of accomplishment in commissioning. Um, I think if I had to give somebody a sales pitch of the attractive parts about commissioning now is that one, the scenery always changes, right? Like you go to work for some company, chances are you're going to be working out of the same office every day, you know, for as long as, you know, all the way till retirement, if you want. With commissioning, the scenery changes all the time. Um, like we talked about earlier, like first project at Tesla, you walk into a huge building building, you know, these brand new model three cars with systems that we had never seen before. Um, you know, you go from that to like a data center project to, I mean, Logan just did a, a great wolf lodge where he's commissioning systems that they use for their water slides and stuff. It's like the scenery never changes. So, um, that's always nice. You know, you're on a project for a year or two, um, you know, at a time, and then you move on to another project. Um, so that's, that's super cool. You get to work with a lot of interesting people, um, different project teams, everybody from, you know, the owners all the way down to the, the trades people who are installing the work. Um, so I think I like that variety. Um, I like the, you know, the emphasis that the owners put on us to really be their technical eyes and ears and, and help them solve problems. Um, so if I had to give the sales pitch, those would be kind of the highlights of, of why I really enjoy doing commissioning now. Yeah. Yeah, I echo the same same things. I mean, I've been on the I've been on the roof of a data center in Schaumburg, Illinois, when it was six degrees below zero. And I've been on the roof of a data center in Texas when it was 115 out. You know, it's just it's like it does change, but it's nothing's permanent, right? Um so that all that sounds miserable, but it's just to say that like you have so much variety of mm -hmm. of, of scenery. Um, yeah, and I I um so you asked a specific question, Ryan, about what made me choke. So I think I was in a position yeah. to kind of choose which job I wanted, mm -hmm. even though not really. Um, my options, I think I did like three or four interviews that year. Um, UIP was the one um, one of the ones I got an offer from. The other ones were like a boy inside sales engineer with RF McDonald, which was like, yeah, that didn't sound very fun. Another one was NASCO, the shipbuilding um, mm -hmm. uh, shipyard down in San Diego. I think I actually went down there for an interview and I don't, I don't even know if it worked out. I, I don't know if I ever got an offer from them. So it was one of my, I mean, at the end of the day, it was one of my only options, if not my only option. So I ran with it and, um, and it was cool. I did like the, I did like the, um, um, the concept of like you're doing engineering but not design work and i did like it just sounded like kind of a cool hands-on mm -hmm. sort of dynamic career uh, nice. path. Nice. that's why i made the decision yep. um so then i mean you guys started critical arc and everything um what did so and there you're flipping over to being founders owners you know the big the big managers and stuff um how did everything up to that point in your guys's career kind of prepare you to take on these new roles and responsibilities? And then um, what are things that you guys have had to learn throughout that, throughout that process um, of being, being the point man, point men for everything? Um, Logan, we'll kick it, kick it to you first. Um, there wasn't a lot of preparation, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. And Brian and I still suffer from this. We, we have always done the work mm -hmm. and all the management stuff is still very new. Like we're still trying to figure it all out, you know? Um, and we learn, we learn stuff every day and we're still, Brian and I are still, and Justin too, our third partner, we're still on projects. Um, we still manage projects. We're still on site. Um, in fact, la last week we were doing a big sales pitch to a the biggest tech company in the world. Um, there was 17 people on the call 
and Justin, our president, was down at San Diego airport testing a safety shoe on a passenger boarding bridge while on the meeting on his phone. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. So there's not a lot of preparation for being an <laughs> owner and like dealing with like HR problems and expense reports and all that. But just like everything, I mean, you we take the skills that Brian and I just just described about how to take a complex problem and break it down into mm-hmm. smaller problems. And we apply it to those new problems, which is, okay, what is the best expense report program to select for our employees? And, and, you know, the thing just, it grows, right. And you, you really can't control how fast or how slow, how slow you grow. And so you kind of just have to roll with it. And um, a lot of it is just figuring out as you go. And it's no different than stepping into a building and looking at a new chiller system that you've never seen before and looking around and, deciding how you're going to tackle this problem um it's just a different side of your brain if you will you know um but it's a learning it's a learning opportunity every day (laughs) and switching back and forth between project stuff and operation stuff and is probably the hardest part is just flipping your brain back and forth between doing a design review and then talking about you know recruiting (laughs) or something like that Mm -hmm. right so and definitely brian anything you you would want to add to that at all? Um, I, I think my desire to start my own company I've, I've had for a while. Um, I think I've always had that kind of entrepreneurial spirit in me. Um, but I think a lot of that was driven by watching my father and, and his job. I mean, he, I saw him working for, for General Electric uh, my entire life, always gone um, on the road working, you know, 50, 60, 70 hour weeks, um, just absolutely killing himself for the betterment of big brother. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. um, and I knew like, dad, like if you went out and did your own thing, like all of these clients that you're working for would still want to hire you and, and you would kind of have more control over your future. And I saw that and I just saw an opportunity kind of, you know, all throughout, uh, just watching him, coil away right um so it was always in the back of my mind I think I was just always kind of waiting for kind of the right opportunity to present itself um it's kind of tough to do when you're sailing right because you're just kind of in that mode it's, it, it'd be tough to start a start a business centered around sailing um so I think it was it wasn't until after I got into commissioning got my got my feet underneath me and my bearings and kind of understood the right ways and wrong ways of doing commissioning. And and then kind of looking out at the competition and seeing that the bar isn't too high here, guys, like there's some opportunity here to to come in and and really help uh, some owners out on the commissioning side. And, you know, I thought we had a pretty good process on our side. And I think when Turner decided to dissolve the company in 2014, it just kind of, hit the accelerator uh, for us to do this. Um, and really there's there's no looking back. I mean, I'm super, super happy with the decision that we made back then. I mean, it's, it's stressful at times and all that, but um, I really enjoy the fact that we can kind of can control our own destiny um, a little bit here. And, you know, that's the message that I think we try to give our employees. Like, look, we're not, some big conglomerate where you guys don't have a say in how the the future of this company is shaped. Um, All of you have a voice. We're small enough to be able to react to to that um, and really implement change uh, rapidly to to make the company better for everybody. So um, yeah, there's a lot of perks to doing it. Um, It is a lot of responsibility, but um, there's a lot of reward too, so. Mm The best part is that uh, Brian's dad actually works for Critical Arc now. So now Brian gets to withhold <laughs> Mike's allowance. So whenever he's, he wants. he's working. Big brother is now son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He saw what we were doing and he got jealous and he, he came over. And now, now he's our top, top electrical guy. Um, yeah. Nice. And it's been great ever since. Cool. And uh, Logan, one thing you touched on that, that I think um, that I really like just in talking with students a lot is how you guys found, um, okay, this is not something we really prepared for, but we, the, the skills and breaking down systems really, and that process is what has helped inform you guys and, and work through 
through the issues because that's like one thing we hear in our office a lot is with students like well how am I going to do something that I don't know how to yeah. do it and it's falling back on similar types of things for sure it's so easy to it's so easy to make excuses we're all guilty of it right it's so mm -hmm. easy to make excuses and be like oh, I couldn't do that right that's what mm -hmm. that's what that's what most people would say but just like when I told my mother when I decided I want to go to school for mechanical engineering and she was like that's pretty hard you know it's like well, I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. Um, that, um, you know, I come from a family. My mom is a career waitress, basically. Um, and my dad was a school bus driver, heavy equipment operator and school bus driver. So I wanted an opportunity to, to do something huge. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the same outlook I still have today. It's like, okay, it's just a simple problem. It's a simple, it's a simple problem with a simple solution. I may not understand how it all works, but um, we'll figure it out. And, the three of us and Brian and I and Justin, we all bring different outlook on things mm -hmm. um, to, to, to every, every problem. And we really do a great job. I think of, of, you know, we, the reason why we call it critical arc is because it takes three points to make an arc and there's three of us. So we all offer a different point of view on everything, mm -hmm. which um, really helps, you know? Yeah. Like and we keep, we keep each other accountable, right? Like, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not doing this on my own. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be a lot, I think, for any one person. So if it's something that somebody out there is contemplating, um, having solid business partners and people that you can bounce ideas off of, uh, certainly helpful. I always tend to be like overly optimistic with anything that comes along and it's nice to, to have my business partners to kind of bring me back to earth mm -hmm. every once in a while. Um, I'm gonna write you know, that down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I. Don't, I mean, it, there's definitely uh when you when you build out any type of team, the balance and and how you how the puzzle pieces fit uh, to, you know, strengths and weaknesses and and all yeah. that kind of stuff is yeah is definitely true for sure. Yeah. Um. So then at, at Critical Arc, then some of some of the projects and contracts you guys have worked on. What have been some of your guys' uh, favorite, most rewarding, you know, con contracts or projects that you guys have worked on? Whose turn is it to go first? Uh, we'll go. We'll go to Brian on this one. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, almost all of them, really. Like, there. I think there's a few that stand out. Like the the time at Tesla was kind of mind blowing. Like you show up mm -hmm. at a project that's one of a kind, right? There's no other. At least back then, there was no other Gigafactory. There's no precedence to how this should be done. And you walk into a room that is full of engineers from MIT and Berkeley and Stanford and just super heavy, heavy hitting uh, schools. And you walk in and like, you're trying to solve these super complex problems together with systems that, you know, a lot of people hadn't even seen before. Um, so that was a super rewarding project. Um, getting to work like on the front lines of the whole electric vehicle push, right? This was 2016, you know, when you may see a Tesla, you know, three or four of them a day. Now you can't drive to the grocery store without seeing, you know, Everywhere. two dozen of them. Yep. So to know that we were a part of that um, early on was big. I mean, our, our job there was to set up the commissioning program for Tesla, um, which at the time was one project, just Gigafactory one. And they're still using the same program that we built across all of their different projects. They've got some campuses in the Bay Area. They've got Gigafactory Berlin, Gigafactory Texas, Gigafactory China, right? And they're still using the same process that we laid the groundwork for back to Gigafactory 1. So that's, that's super rewarding. Um, I, we did a, I think more recently after that, we did a, a data center project for Google, which it was my first data center project. Um, to me, that one was very rewarding because up until that point in my career, I had never really had a heavy focus on electrical. Um, and you go and do a data center project and it's really all about electrical. So that was a super rewarding project. Um, we've had others that Logan's been on. Maybe I'll let you fill in some of the blanks there, Logan. But um, yeah, a lot of our projects um, you know, really, really helped us get to where we are today. So. Yeah. And, and just to reflect back on the Tesla thing, that was definitely like a category two fun job where it was like, I, I think there's multiple days that Brian and I, you know, because we were friends and we, um, 
we were just starting out and didn't have any money and you know everything we, we actually shared an apartment up in reno and stuff and there were times that like one of us would roll in at like 9 30 at night after like a 16 hour you know 18 hour day and that was that happened on a regular basis and it was it was just because like that's what the job took um mm -hmm. so you, it's one of those ones where it's like it really sucked in the moment you know but looking yeah. back it's like that was that was a that was a really cool experience to be able to do that um and the fact that we we hung out there for two years um really shows i think that we did a great job um you know some of the other projects um brian mentioned google but we also have um uh we've got pet people on uh, a couple of facebook jobs and a, a facebook data centers and apple data center um which is pretty cool um and then um you know like the great wolf lodge like just kind of fun you know yeah. like you, you like walk into like the mirror maze it's like <laughs> oh this is like there's like i see like 17 of myself wearing hard hats and uh, <laughs> and reflective vests and it's just different you know like you don't uh -huh. see that um i've done some fabrication plants and I, I did a lot of data centers when i was with turner and eyp for qualcomm and cisco and Citigroup and you know, data centers are cool, but they're at the end of the day, they're all kind of the same. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of like this, like, like I'm doing a casino right now, which, um, you know, it's not very difficult. It's got a central plant and stuff, but it's like I'm walking in there and they get these the crazy finishes with all these TVs everywhere and stuff. And it's like, OK, this is kind of neat, you know, mm -hmm. um, so we get to see if we can make it work. So I kind of like those jobs, too. Um, and then we we're doing a huge one in San Diego, um, which is going to be like the next five or seven years. And we're going to be hiring we we'll be hiring uh, several people from Cal Maritime, hopefully for that project over the next, the course of the next year or so. So that's going to be a cool job too. <clears throat> nice. And I, I would call that perfect synergy because you segue to my next question is what, what are you guys looking for then when you're hiring new employees, um, skills, personalities, like what, you know, what is, uh, what does it take to be a good commissioning engineer and how do you guys like try and pinpoint that? And Logan, we'll start with you. I think the, Honestly, the most important thing is good communication skills, right? Because you can be the smartest technical person or the dumbest technical person, but if you it, you can always learn if you don't know. I mean, we all walk into situations that we don't we don't we've never seen in this system, or we we're not familiar with how an energy recovery unit works, or a variable refrigerant uh, flow, you know, fan coil or whatever. We all we always have to like learn that stuff. But if you can't um, if you can't communicate, um, we're, you know, we're in meetings where you're talking to the owner, right? You're talking to like the CEO of the company or the CTO or, or some high level executive. Mm -hmm. And then the next meeting you're working with like the pipe fitters, you're, you're in a meeting with the pipe fitters, or sometimes you're in a meeting with both the pipe fitters all the way up. So you have to know your audience. You have to be able to effectively communicate. You have to remember what team you're playing on. Um, not to you know say something stupid that's gonna like make the general contractor look bad. Um, it's very, it's a, it's sometimes can be a fine dance, and you have to have the, that self awareness and those communication skills to effectively communicate both verbally and and written. Um, not to mention just you know be willing. I think we always look for people that are willing to travel a little bit because um, traveling is just kind of a thing in commissioning if they don't build data centers in your backyard all the time and they don't build airports in your backyard all the time right so you do have to travel a little bit so one thing we look for is people that aren't worried to worry about traveling a little bit you know gotcha. about, about half the time or so brian anything uh, you want to add to that um I, I mean i think for the most part logan hit the hit the nail on the head um i, I think the only thing i would add is is folks that are looking to have some fun in, in coming to work, right? Like it's very easy to come in and, and do what we do and get stressed out by it. But I think at least on our side with Critical Arc is we try and we try and keep it fun um, as much as we can. And a lot of that is the, the personalities that we have on the team. Um, you know, we like to do things as a team. Um, we had an event a couple months ago out in Oregon where we just got the whole team out there and spent the weekend and, did some snowmobiling and some skiing and, you know, things like that. Like we realize that this is, this is our work. This is how we, we make a living, but it doesn't mean we can't have fun uh, doing it. So um, I think that's the only other thing I would add uh, communication. I, you know, I agree with Logan. That's probably the number one, the number one key to, 
to being successful in this. Uh, obviously, having a technical background is helpful, but those are the types of things that we can, you know, train people up on. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Well, guys, that's all the questions um, that I have. You guys got any any closing thoughts um, for any students or alums or shoot, even potential students, um, you know, that listen to this that are thinking about coming to Cal Maritime that you guys would uh, would like to pass on from your time here, your careers and um, and how this the education has helped you guys. Uh, Brian, we'll, we'll close with you and then Logan. I mean, I'm I'm a big advocate of, of Cal Maritime. Obviously, it's uh, kind of a family tradition, but uh, there's not a day that goes by in my life where I'm not thankful that I went to school there. Just the, the foundation that it gave me um, in my career. And just looking back at, you know, here I am on a meeting with one of my best college buddies 20 years later, and we're working together and all that. So the, the relationships really stand out, you know, um, class sizes are small, so you really build um, those relationships that last a lifetime. Um, on top of that, you add the the cruises with uh, either on the training ship or the commercial cruises and stuff, and you're graduating, you're 21, 22 years old or whatever, but yet you've already seen so much of the world and it's such a great perspective to have as you go through life. Um, you know, it just opens up your purview to, to there's so much more out there and, um, you know, wouldn't wouldn't change a thing really um if i had to do it all over again i'd I'd definitely go back um you know if if i'm fortunate enough for my my son or daughter to to want to go there when they get older i'd be all for it um so yeah nice yeah and i you know i'll I'll add to the traveling part of it too you know I, i i never traveled internationally um didn't take my first airplane flight until i believe eighth grade um so to go to like i think we went to 10 different countries between the two cruises which was like unbelievable i mean Mm -hmm. unbelievable experience for somebody that came from a low-income family that never traveled you know um that was just that was amazing and just to get a little sample of each of those like places um is just is just you know it, it was just unbelievable um and then i would just encourage people you know kind of like what I was saying earlier, just take the chance, right? You have the one thing we struggle with, with, with one thing I really enjoy about having employees is we have people that are, you know, in their twenties and, you know, early thirties and stuff. And they can't, it's hard for them to imagine like so far in advance to plan Mm -hmm. so far in advance, right? You're talking to a, you know, fresh graduate that's, you know, 22, 23, 24 years old about man, you really, you know, you know, you put as much as you can in your 401k, right? And they don't, it's hard to really understand that, like, how much work, like, how much life you have ahead of you, right? And that would be the one thing, ad- advice I would say is just, like, do the best you can at the beginning, as early as you can, um, both, like, financially, and just take that, take every opportunity, you know, if fail- failure happens, and it's not a big deal, you can recover from it. But don't be afraid to take chances. Um, you end up working with some really cool people and, and you never know how things are going to work out. There's a lot of luck that's involved in doing this and just a lot of willingness to make mistakes, you know? Um, so yeah. And then the other thing, the last thing I guess is just that, you know, for maritime students, I think a lot of people, and I tell, I told them this at the career fair last week too, is, um, a lot of people think they either sail or they go work as a building engineer or maybe they do design but there's this whole world of you know building commissioning and consultants that, that's that's in there that has a little bit of everything um mm-hmm. which is a really cool field to be in that a lot of people just don't know about so i certainly appreciate ryan i, I certainly appreciate when i did my alumni um survey and i saw the engineering commissioning as a job mm-hmm. Like, yep. what do you, I think the question was like, what do you do for a living now? And commissioning was an option. And I was like, that's like the first time I've ever seen that. So, uh-huh. Yeah. We're getting the word out. So I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's, um, it's something that I think has been getting a little bit more interested, more people asking about like, so what does that, what does that actually do? And so I was um, definitely happy to get you guys, you know, on the show and, and be able to talk a little bit more more about it because I, you know, I I do my best, but I can only say, you know, I can only say so so much. So letting it hear hear it from people that um, shoot, yeah. 
figured it out and, and are doing what you guys are doing now and run your own company is um, pretty cool. So thank you guys uh, yeah. very much for sure. Thank you. Of course. Appreciate it. And remember, you can find all of our episodes on YouTube on the Cal Maritime uh, YouTube page, search Connecting Keel Haulers. You can find us on Spotify, search Connecting Keel Haulers, subscribe so you get when we drop any new episodes. Um, we're also on the Career Services website, a little bit more in-depth uh, profile and uh, questions, timestamps, so on and so forth on that. And if, if anybody does want to connect with Brian or Logan, um, we'll link their email uh, in the show notes on our on the career services webpage. And if you're interested in a career in critical arc, as you heard, they're uh they're expanding and and have some uh big project starting in San Diego next year. Uh so look at their careers page, stay in touch with them, network, um, all that good stuff. Thanks for listening.